um, repairs the typical, hey, good morning, Jack. The Brostrom repair, which is a direct repair involving the extensor retinaculum and then putting the repair through tunnels within the fibula. And then there are all these different lateral procedures to reconstruct the chronic instabilities using the perineal uh, uh, longus and brevis and um, wrapping it around the calcaneus and the fibula. So medial ankle sprains, 55% uh, of all ankle sprains are very, uh, not that common at all with forced eversion. Uh, the deltoid ligaments can be injured and you can have a syndesmosis injury. So syndesmosis, and I, I get, when did he start calling these high ankle sprains? Now that's the common T. usage. T. Huh? T. After T.O.? T.O. got his football player. T.O. was now like... everybody knows what it is, yeah. Yeah, T.O. was what, 2003, was it? He got injured? 2000, 2000, 2005, wasn't it? When San Francisco was in the uh, Super Bowl. After that, they call it a high ankle sprain. They don't call it syndesmosis injury. So, I had no idea that's what it was. I thought I thought it was... They called it that long, much longer. Did they? Yeah, okay. In the physical therapy literature, um, is that where it comes from? You always the uh, army um, from West Point. Is that true? Yeah, high ankle sprain. Basically, they're out six weeks, whereas a normal ankle sprain, you're out like two weeks. You know, if you're a college football player. Okay, so syndesmosis, uh, as uh, attached, it, it, we went over it before. Remember, the, the, there's most of the strength comes at the level of the ankle, posterior and anterior. Uh, uh, tip fib ligament and through the interosseous membrane it keeps those two bones together so we talked about the squeeze test already another test could be laying the patient on a pillow and letting it sag and taking an AP x-ray I thought that was kind of a interesting way to prove problems and then stress radiographs would you guys have any rules of thumb I, I, um, how about you Doug how do you stress it if you if you're in OR and you're thinking about fixing the syndesmosis so the typical thing is you fix the fibula and then you check the syndesmosis I just pull on the clamp. You do the clamp on the fibula? Aren't you worried you're going to pull your plate apart or no? No, because I've done a great job plating it. Right, you're courageous. <laughs> I, I usually just do this. I just externally rotate it, and then it's really obvious if the thing's on the fluoro. It's really obvious if it's loose or not. So we talked about the stress test opens up the medial joint. And then to fix it, you have to get, it used to be called the Bill Cook. So uh, I, got a, I got a better clamp for us, though. Really? Yeah, there's a medium bone clamp tray from Synthes. It's just a tenaculum without that ball right there which will necros the skin. You know that's in there, right? There's a whole tray full of No, what's it called? Desk, specifically, the medium bone clamp tray from Synthes has a nice tenaculum. Like, medium bone like clamp? Like in residency that they didn't have here when you got Yeah. There. You have to ask for it. Yeah, this, I forget. That's we a pelvic reduction. Yeah, we used to get pelvic reduction, yeah. I didn't know we had that. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've had it for three years. Okay, well, at night, they, at night they can't find anything, so I need to know what it's called. They've got it. It's about this tall. This is called the tibial plateau clamp. Yeah, right. That's what we used to use. We have both. Okay, and you can see this guy's open medially. Put the clamp on, and it closes, and then put the screw across. Unless you use the tightrope. What do you think about that? Well, I got a, I got a, I got a slide on the tightrope. Yeah. Right. So fix it. Never lag it. Here's a... Doug taught me that this thing has to be reduced with a CAT scan. So controversies, how many screws? We've talked about this before, so we want either three or four in position. Uh, Paul Tornado proved that it doesn't make one bit of a difference if it's plantar flex or dorsiflexed. So the endo button tightrope. So apparently this is what all the foot and ankle guys do. So what do you, what, what do you guys do? They're trying to get me to do it. How much, how much does it cost, I wonder? A couple hundred dollars. Probably, it is like 500 bucks plus the rental fee mm. really 500 to do it yeah and yeah. i think just for that yeah and i think the reason they do it is because it does it, it makes your x-ray maybe look bad you, you can't see a, you don't see a bad x-ray because you don't see a screw that's whack <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's right there you know? plus you don't have to take it out is the that's the advantage is that the cost of taking it out is negated so the cost then you could Put it against that. I see, yeah, you have to pay the surgery center the fee. Removal. Yeah, that's true. And anesthesia and hospital time on the next go. You're yeah. Take them all out. That's true. It's a good argument. Yeah. But I've never used it. I've never used it. Um, so after last last month's conference, you upset me so much about this syndesmotic screw discussion <laughs> that I looked up, I did a, a review, and there was, there was actually an article. Where to put the screw? The fate of the syndesmotic screw. Oh, whether it breaks or not. And they talked about whether it breaks or not, and, and you know what, 
And so basically, it really didn't help me much, but a lot of people put more multiple screws and bigger screws. And so you, it was sort of emphatic that the chance of a, a screw breaking has to do with if you just put one, three, five, and it's more likely to break than if you put two, four, fives in it. That's why I always put a four, five in it. What did they give me? I only put a four or five. Cause I don't fight. Three fives break. Yeah, I don't fight at night. I was like, what do you got? Give me something. Really? You I, take them out at 12 weeks, anyhow? I wait four months. I take mine out. What's wrong with that? Right time. What's wrong with the breaking? Three or four months. Yeah, okay. It's sloppy. Having it's broken sloppy. stuff in you? Sloppy. Yeah, it's bad. You know, a couple of years later, the screws are broken. That guy yeah. never told me they forget it. Yeah, well, if, your wife, you, if your wife if your wife cheats on you, it's be, if your wife cheats on you, it's because you have a broken screw. Well, that's why. Also, <laughs> they they improve their motion when you take their screw back out. Yeah, they do. They, yeah. That's that's the reason you take it out. If they get their better motion. They get their door spudging better after you take it out. It definitely makes a difference. And, and the rule of thumb, I, I tell people, is 50% of people get 50% pain relief. So they're always like, you know, well, taking out my hardware and make me better, I'm saying, you know. But this one, it'll make for, you I do it only for motion. I don't do it because it's... Right. Because it moves. It moves a millimeter, last, one or two millimeters, yeah. Right. Right. Jack shocked me. He said he never takes them out. He lets them break. And I was like... Jack's old school, though. He's like, they don't make them like him he anymore. He said, I tell them they're going to break, and they break. You should them. use a PLA screw, then. Just use one of those instead. There you go. Then you can't tell okay. Or the tight rope. Or the tight rope. Who sells the tight Who sells that. the tight rope? Arthrex. <laughs> oh yeah, Arthrex, right. That's where right, I got we'll this slide from. Go down there, right? This is from Arthrex. <laughs> but, um, I don't do knee scopes, so I don't know the rep. No, I, shoulder. There's I a big shoulder, yeah. No. Tell them I'll try. If you see the Arthrex rope, tell them I'll try it. Come back? Yeah, I want right. to try it. I'll tell them you, you Actually I got one I got one in the hospital right now. So eight so ankle dislocations, they're rare. The last time I saw one was in residency when a guy's uh, foot got caught up in a motorcycle wheel. It's from forced inversion. Uh, anterior lateral ligaments are damaged. Um, and they're open usually. And you have to rule out neurovascular injury. That's a Pan Taylor dislocation. Yeah. That's not an ankle dislocation. Yeah, I just do it in there for okay. eye candy. So, uh, <laughs> tibia Taylor. So, usually the man is closed to check neurological status, do it promptly. Um, and then put it in a cast. They see here plantar, uh, plantar grade position. I'm not sure why. Do you guys know why you would keep it plantar grade? No. I'm going to hold a reduction better. I don't know. Is that, is it, is that re the reason why you do that? I don't know. We don't see him here anyway. No. Ankle no, dislocation. That goes to downtown. Okay. Achilles tendons ruptures, I'm sure we, we, uh, we hear a lot about. I mean, you know, if you, if you put a plantar grade, the no stresses on the uh, I, think that most I think it's mostly bony stability. Really? Well, it won't. It won't. You won't lose reduction of the ankle. There's no way you would lose reduction of ankle disappearance. Like right? Yeah. So, Kelly, said I learned something. I was kind of. You know, while I was getting coffee. Yeah. The statement didn't matter when you put the center of the screw in, whether they would. Source deflection or plantar flexion, right? Like that. Paul that's, Turnett approved it. That surprised me. Paul Turnett approved it in 2001. Doug said it. I looked it up. I didn't believe Doug. I never believed anything he says. I had to look it up, and I he's still right. Put it in neutral. Yeah, neutral is fine, but um, but you don't have to. You don't right. have to. You don't have to. You can choose. However you're comfortable. It's a choice. But they well, used to be. A, they used to be a you know big focus. Someone's having to hold the position. Point, put it in. I just pain in the rear. I just get this unsettling feeling if I do it in plantar flexion in my stomach, but I just got to learn to live with that. Okay. It's okay to do it. The article is wrong. Neutral. I, I, just, I still don't understand that. Paul Tornado's right. He's like, well, it's, it's too high in the academy to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Listen, I learned something today. That the true myth of Achilles was not that he had an Achilles heel. And I was shocked. Did you know that too? Oh, baby, did I know that? It, nowhere in the Iliad is it written that his, it was his Achilles heel. That's where he was shot. You read the whole thing? No. Right no, I read it in Wikipedia today. That was added in 1 AD. When he killed, uh, was it Hector? No, Priam shot him with an arrow, but it didn't say in his heel. Right. That was added at 1 AD. I was shocked. Right. My whole life, 45 years, I thought that that was in the Iliad. Right. And my dad taught me that. Do you know how he killed, uh, was it Priam? Uh, uh, Priam? Hector. He killed Hector. Hector. And what he did is he put a thing through his Achilles tendons and dragged him on the back of his chariot. 
Maybe that's where it's from. He did the percutaneous Achilles tendon <laughs> technique. Drag, drag, drag. And, and you know, I think now what we, what they do in Iraq and Iran, you know, these savages. No, let's not talk about. Let's not talk about that. It's like the same thing that they were let, doing. Let, you know, a couple of that. You know, they let, kill these guys. They drag them behind. Let, the let's not talk right in front of his father. Let's focus. We're civilized. It's, <laughs> it's like orthopedics. There was nothing. We're not barbarians. We're like Romans. A, we're civilized. Brad, it was Brad Pitt. You can see. Him. So it's one AD guys. It's got nothing to do with the true myth of Achilles when the when Homer read it read, wrote it in the seven hundred. BC. What do you mean? I was shocked. Fed it, the story the is Thetis, his mother, grabbed Achilles by his heel and put him in the river Styx and made him immortal. But where she was holding the heel was his weakness. That was his that was his tragic flaw in Greek literature. But that was added in 1 AD, which is way past... Uh, Those Greeks. The, yeah. No, it wasn't Greek. It was probably a Roman who made that lie. Rewriting, rewriting history. Roman, re yeah. So there you go. You learn something every day. So, so what is the, the truth? You say that's not the truth? The true ancient Greek story is that he was just a great warrior. He didn't have this Achilles heel. He just died. He, he got killed by Paris, who, who shot him with an arrow. So anyway, the, pair of shorts. <laughs> well, us Greek people, we like to let it, let everything go sometimes. So, so the tendon is ten to twelve centimeters long. I don't know. That's a Roman statue. 0.5 to 1 centimeters in diameter, and there's an avascular zone 2 to 6 centimeters proximal to the insertion of the calcadeus where it ruptures. And uh, the Thompson test is when you, uh, when you, we just look at it, when you just look at it, this one's ruptured and this one's not because there's nothing's connecting it back here. So it's very obvious when you look at it in the prone position. Mm -hmm. And patients say that they thought someone, they got hit by a rock or, or in the city, in Baltimore City, they say I was shot. In Hartford County, they say someone threw a rock at me, or, or a bat, baseball bat. Right. Somebody kicked you in the back. Of the yeah, somebody kicked in Hartford around, County, yeah. They look around for it. In the city, they say, I thought I was shot. Mm -hmm. And um, you get an acute... <laughs> Again, yeah. Acute, the average age is 35. People on steroids, fluoroquinolones, like... Um, um, what's, the, what's the antibiotic? I forgot. Uh, Cipro. Cipro. Or chronic Cipro. overuse, Cipro. yeah. And it's usually just above the Achilles tendon, three to four and centimeters. Anecdotally, 75% are black males. Is that true? I've seen so many black males with Achilles ruptures in my practice over the years. I don't think there's I any predilection more, to there, no, black yeah, versus white. Well, maybe. I don't know why. That's your practice. Maybe it's because uh, I've of seen basketball, a lot. basketball that they're, that they're the putting it under stress when because usually they come and say I was playing basketball when they did it. Maybe it's just the sport instead of the. I, I don't think there's any review on because they also have more quad tendon ruptures and other things. That. I swear to God, there's more tendon ruptures in that group than any other type I've, of person I've in the world. More. I've You're crazy. More. I'm not crazy. You're I've crazy. Seen more quad tendon ruptures in black males as well. Thank you. What do you think, guys? I'm not commenting yeah, on that. I'm not commenting on that. Let's keep going. It's true. 50, 50. Just, it's just an interesting thought. 50-50. Huh? I think, you know, as far as Achilles tendon, I think it would be more than people. Okay. But uh, I've got more patellar tendon and quad tendon than any other group. You know, they, it's, just, it's a tendon, so I'm just wondering if there's a connection. Uh, let's, let's, keep, let's, not, let's keep talking. It's still PG. So, uh, Achilles, I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to put this on because I screwed up. <laughs> but I may put it on. I have to, I have to edit it because it, it's complicated. I mean, this, this discussion is as good as Achilles. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, <laughs> Chronic renal failure is what you see. It's, Correct. It's, but all the these group. guys are young, healthy 40-year-old males. And I, I swear that's a... Yeah, the last couple... Of you may be right. Some of that might be... We should like study it. A lot of sports we now. should I'm study it. Yeah. So, uh, surgical repair. Here's a, here's a guy that... Um, I saw my office, Doug repaired his Achilles tendon and he came back with this infection. Aww. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so that's the best basic problem with Achilles tendon ruptures is that the skin sloughs, I think. And at-risk people are diabetes, smokers, vascular disease, or a large BMI. Putting in that pig skin, maybe. Yeah, I never More did More stuff in there. Yeah. So you can treat it non-operatively uh, in plantar flexion and slowly bring them up from equinus to neutral in like four to six weeks and then start letting them walk. And, and I think like six to eight weeks or so in a cast or you can do a long leg cast. Why should you treat this non-operatively? Well, then you don't have to worry about the wound healing, infection. It's cheaper, but there's a higher re-rupture rate. And they're, I thought they, they disproved that just recently. Yeah, there's a lot of articles. There's, an artic you know, there's a lot of articles. A major article, what, two months ago or Not something like that, <clears throat> and talking about that at the end of a year, there's no difference. Uh, For re-rupture. Re and, the, and, the, and the main problem, or the main difference was uh, exactly what you didn't put in there is that they 
put them in a neutral position and walk them. It's the early rehab, just like with ACLs, the early rehab. We used to keep them six months on a bent knee and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what they do is they, they walk them in a walker for three or four months protected and feel that that rehab allows it to, because you're still in the sheath. To grow uh, the... And to grow back. Grow and, the fibers there. But if you, if you don't early rehab them, then they have a lot of the things that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. But if you early rehab them, they say at the end of a year, it's the in same. their study, that it's exactly the same. It's amazing. And I'll tell you in a year whether it's going to work or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a young, <coughs> year old guy who had no insurance and said, I just can't afford to be operated on and things like that. I'd rather treat it closed. I think they do all right. He looks at it's literature. It's just a different. So if you open it, the medial incision avoids the sorrel <coughs> nerve. Different types of sutures. There's the running locking uh, whip stitch. I don't call it crack out. Um, baseball stitch. Uh, or a banal stitch. Um, this, this I f actually, I found this on the internet. This, I think, is like the key to why people get complications is you, you like you stretch the skin too much yeah so I don't even put a retractor when I do them but I'm not a foot and ankle surgeon so I'm afraid um, but this is this is an article that goes SETI and all which says they, they're better they go back to sports at a higher level their calf doesn't atrophy and they have better ankle movement Jack so now what well again I think I think that most of the previous literature for you know, little old ladies and all. young guys that, didn't, that, that are treated op non operatively were treated with Don't delayed rehabilitation. Yeah, you can get them back faster. Yeah, some that's, people, that's a big deal for some people. But that's, but, but that's as far as healing. <clears throat> and, you know, a year down the road, apparently, the early rehab is the only major difference. If your plantar flex in surgery, those tendons are right next to each other, so it's going to heal. I don't think the suture helps that much, getting it to heal. I think you're right. Okay, so I had, is, I had a I had a patient that was six weeks after his Achilles tendon rupture, and I said, yeah, and he said, well, I really would, would like to get it fixed, so I went in and operated on. Damn thing's almost healed. Six weeks. Six weeks. And you felt the definite gap early on. Still gap. Still gap, but healed at six weeks. But it was it was scarred in enough. There was enough scar in there that I actually had to go through the scar to take it down and then repair it. People don't need sur <laughs> people don't need surgeons, Jack. They heal by themselves. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Sometimes we'll be out of a job. Not true, Kelly. They limp a lot. That's There's, <laughs> There's still a place for uh, the majority. I don't repair the majority of them. Probably ninety percent of them are not repair. You know, there's still a small place. I think there's still a small place for it. But I think the difference is the rehab. And I, I you know, and I've been that article is actually like two years old. And I've never found a patient that can walk day one from an Achilles tendon. I don't walk them right away. I walk them at like two weeks. But the, the big deal is rehab. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people just kept them in a cast for you know whenever and then tried to. Do you walk lock them. that ankle in a cam walker? That's yeah. Like articulated cam walker that you can put into. Yeah, I get a degrees Achilles, of tendon, Achilles tendon boot and you put in these wedge wedges, heels yeah. and you know every month I take out a wedge and I keep them in a boot for like uh, three months. Yeah, at least yeah. I don't know. You know the ones I, you fix, you keep them in for three no, months? No, the ones I don't oh, fix. Oh, you don't, okay. And, and, it, and, then I, and then I make them get a shoe insert for nine months. I tell them, you know, you have a risk of re-rupture up to nine months. And the ones that I've seen re-rupture, like when I was a resident, went the hand surgeon, you know, had his Achilles tendon repaired. And then he's playing on the stairs with his kids, and he has an open re-rupture right in front of his kids. <laughs> so re-ruptures are bad. And I tell him, you know, you're going to get it on the stairs. You know, if you miss the step, yeah, the heel goes down or something like that. And, you know, for, for high-risk patients like high BMI, uh, you know, older, less poor proprioception, I, I get them like a permanent, uh, you know, like half-inch heel lift. Heel wedge. In that article, though, I don't even think they uh, plant or flex them at all. I think they put them in neutral. You should feel, you should, f you know, a lot of times you can feel them and, you know, you can adjust their f their heel and, and sometimes you can even approximate the I tendon. agree, though. In surgery, if you're in neutral, it's wide. It's two centimeters. Yeah, I know. It's and not next to It's a lot harder for the, <clears throat> to heal, I would think, than putting them in a little plantar flexion. And I don't think it's right, going to heal. Plantar flexion where you let that thing hang naturally and it's right on. 
Because it's spasm too of the muscle. The muscle say, but I don't think I don't think they plantar flexion. They might not at have, all. but I think I would tend to. And I think that the I the, would do what Doug says. The, uh, deal is the fact that you have an intact sheath and it grows in the sheath and so it just scars the ankle joint should come back it's not in damage so if you keep it plantar flex it should come back without a problem okay who got anybody does it percutaneously no okay i'll do this quickly because this is not really acute this is not a foot and ankle uh talk but um people can have chronic achilles tendon ruptures i've only done one in my whole life um they have a remote history of trauma um, the symptoms uh, get better. Sometimes they have no trauma. You can feel a, a defect. Uh, if it's less than three months old or less than a three centimeter gap, fix it primarily. Other than that, you need to reconstruct it with some kind of VY lengthening or allograft. Uh, you can use uh, FHL, FDL. Uh, uh, you can use uh, plantaris. You can do VY lengthening. You can transfer the FHL or FDL by reattaching it in the midfoot. Um, and then uh, using that, F so, so here distally, you reattach the tendons so the FHL keeps working or the FDL keeps working, whichever one you choose to use, and then pull that tendon out into the ankle joint and then use it as a reconstruction. Um, so this is what it should look like afterwards after you leave the FHL in there. Mm -hmm. So other injuries are perineal tendon dislocations. So the perineal tendons go posterior to the fibula, and these can be a source of uh, an ankle injury. Um, and here's a perineal tendon snapping over the fibula, which can happen. And um, if it's extremely painful, you just keep. The, apparently, you should keep the person in plantar flexion, non-weight bearing for uh, six weeks to let it heal. Um, but they're also, if pe people have chronic problems, you can reconstruct it. Um, you can, if, the, if there's a bone, piece of bone there, it's obvious you can just put a screw in a piece of bone. But you can also take uh, portions of tendons to reconstruct it. Um, or you can use bone blocks um, to go over the tendons. Here are two different types. Or you can, here you can see, you can take, this is the posterior portion of the fibula. You can just cut it, scoop some bone out, crack it, and then the tendons can sit in that little area to deepen the groove. Uh, or you can just take a burr and deepen the groove and then use a fascial sling. That's what they used to do at uh, you know, Memorial like 20 years ago when I was a resident. So the other tendon is a posterior tib tendon rupture. I've had, personally, I had posterior tib tendonitis and it was painful. Uh, it took like three weeks to go away. And uh, it's right posterior to the medial malleolus where there's an avascular zone where it can have an injury and there's a lot of friction there. <clears throat> and the posterior tib tendon gives support to the midfoot and gives you an arch, basically. It inverts your hind foot, it locks your transverse tarsal joint, and it maintains your height. If you rupture it, you can get a sag and a, an acquired flat foot, and you can see toes on the outside where you shouldn't. And it's usually middle-aged people. And then on the AP film, the talus can get uncovered, uh, and you can, they can get a Z-shape to the foot. Uh, and you can see the talus can sag as compared to the first metatarsal. And the, this is this shows you the pitch that's normal. And if the talus goes downwards, uh, that's abnormal. And you can reconstruct posterior tib tendons. Um, the classic one is FDL transfer with the calcaneus osteotomy, but now apparently the most they la they do lateral column lengthening too. In addition to that, this is this is not my expertise. Um, so sometimes it's just pain, weakness, no deformity, and those people can be treated with uh, ibuprofen or a cast. But if they have a deformity, if it's, and then you, the deformed feet are either rigid or stiff, and it depends on what you do. So that's it. So any questions? I don't, I don't do well with just orthotics, you know, just a, a well set. People do do well or do not do well? Do well. Do well. You got to start with that. Just a little bit of support. I mean, just yeah, just off the shelf orthotic. Off the shelf. To no, I, to I don't start know. Off the shelf. For posterior tib tendon. Yeah. To, to it was just the tendonitis, and they're not completely collapsed. That's what I start with. <coughs> Questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Achilles tendons. The Achilles tendons. The um, chronic tendonitis, or when you take an MRI or something like that, you see this little spot inside the Achilles tendon.